All right, good morning, everyone. How you doing? Yay! All right, here we go. My name's Stu. Uh, I have a television show called The Average Joe Cooking Show. And today I've got uh, a good friend of mine, Doug, from the city, Ogden City Council, out here helping me out. What we're going to be doing is giving you some basic tips on some grilling ideas. I'm doing a, uh, a butterfly chicken with some uh, sweet and spicy compound butter. And uh, we're also going to be doing a sweet and spicy fruit salad. So I hope you guys stick around because this should be an interesting little thing that we're going to do here. Now, if you guys notice what I'm doing here is I'm pulling these whole chickens out of uh, just a simple salt brine that I've had going for about an hour now. Uh, it's, it's best if you can do it for like two or three hours, but an hour you should get some nice uh, flavor out of it. The brine, what it does is it soaks into the meat, and makes it nice and juicy and tender when you're grilling. Also, what you're gonna wanna do is uh, when you season your meat, you're gonna, you're gonna wanna go ahead and put the seasoning under the skin, in between the skin and the muscle. And that's what gives the meat the flavor. Because we don't want the skin necessarily seasoned because it acts as kind of a protective layer. And uh, once you start cooking, you'll notice that you've got really tasty skin, but pretty bland meat. So we put it underneath the skin. And you just kinda have to get your fingers underneath there and, and work it out. I'll hold it up so everyone can see what I'm doing. It's, everyone can see that I've got my, my fingers working underneath the skin there, trying to get as much of the skin loose as I can so I can get the, the seasoning in there when we're, when we're ready. You do it on the back side also? No, because we're going to be cutting the back side out of it. That's the whole idea about a butterfly chicken. And uh, basically why, the, why a butterfly chicken is because if you cut this sucker up, then you've got to flip like eight pieces of chicken. Whereas if you cut the backbone off of it and butterfly it, you only have to flip one piece of chicken and it still cooks great. So what you do is you stand it up on its head just like so. You find the backbone and then you take your knife and you just run down the side. You're gonna to have to use a little bit of pressure because you are cutting through some bone here. There we go. Now, what size chicken do you use? To... Oh, well, you know what? Whatever's on sale, actually. <laughs> uh, yeah, the, the chicken that I use is uh, from Weiniger's, and uh, they supply all my food. I'd like to obviously thank them for being my sponsor and supplying me with all the food that I use to cook my, or all the stuff I use to cook with my show. All right, anyway, what we've got here is we've got the backbone. Now, if you're one of these people that like to save a little bit of money, Put these in a Ziploc bag, stick them in your freezer for the next time you make chicken stock. That's just great. I mean, a lot of flavor right in there. It's all that stuff out of the marrow. You've got some good meat still there. But save that if you want to. But for my purposes today, I've got to throw it away. So I'm going to place it in there. Now, you'll notice that we've got this chicken completely laid out. It looks very, very comfortable just resting here. Now while I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna remove the stem of the wing just because I like to do that. Okay, now I need my rag. The whole thing is we, we wanna try to get this on the, the grill as quick as possible because it takes about 35 minutes to cook. Oh, okay. So, get that taken care of now. How many of you guys know what a compound butter is? No one? Okay, very, very simple. Compound butter is just butter with stuff in it. Okay, that's the best way to explain it. You take a stick of regular butter, salted or unsalted, whatever your preference is. Now to that, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add about a tablespoon of garlic. Actually a teaspoon, sorry. So. 
set that over there. I am going to add some cumin for a nice smoky flavor. Probably about half a teaspoon. Some black pepper, about a quarter of a teaspoon. Cayenne pepper. Now this is where you guys gotta be a little bit careful because me, I love spicy stuff. So I know what I like. You guys might not want that much of a kick, so start off small, eat the chicken, decide whether or not next time you make it you want it a little bit spicier or less. So I'm just gonna give this a couple shakes because I will be giving this out as samples. And let's see what else. Oh, we needed salt as well. So most of these uh, ingredients are in the regular cupboard. Yeah, and actually that's that was kind of the whole idea behind this episode was to have something that people could just go home and open up their kitchen cupboard and go, oh yeah, I've got all that stuff. Why don't I do that tonight? Yeah. It's simple, it's easy. So I'm adding some chili powder and this shaker's not working too well, so I'm gonna put some in my hand. And we're gonna go with probably two handfuls. <laughs> that that's actually a whole half a teaspoon right there. Now here comes a really difficult part about making compound butter. You just gotta mash it up. There you go. Once it's completely incorporated into the butter and it's all nice and spread out, what we're going to do is we're going to shove all this underneath the skin of that chicken. And so as it's cooking, the butter and the seasoning is going to penetrate into that meat and give it a really nice flavor. Mm. Go. So the butter should be at room temperature. Is that yeah, right? obviously the butter's going to need to be at room temperature. So yeah. pull it out about an hour or two beforehand, and then while you're prepping your chicken after you're done, you can go ahead and use this. Okay. Now, if you want to get really messy, you can use your hands to get up underneath there. But if not, you can go ahead and just kind of slide it up with a fork, press down on the skin, and pull the fork out. And then I just press down. It doesn't need to be completely, because that butter's going to be melting all over the place, so it's going to be running like crazy inside. So I just kind of, where'd it go? Hang on for a second. There we go. Place it up in there. Come here. I'm losing all my compound butter. There we go. So now we're going to go ahead and try to get some into those leg cavities. Oops, sorry about that. Okay, there's one. And there's two. Okay. Now, go ahead and where'd my rag go? There it is. Now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give it a little bit of salt and pepper over the top of the skin and a little bit of oil so to help keep it from sticking in that pan. Uh, there's my oil. Gonna run just a little bit over it, and when you put this in your uh, in your pan, now I, sh I should also mention cast iron frying pan. Uh, if you have one, this is what you're going to be wanting to cook this in. Uh, now you can do this in your oven. You can do it on your gas grill. The thing is, you want an extremely high heat. We're 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 cranking at about 500 degrees right now. Now is that regular salt? No, is this that... is this. Sorry, this is kosher salt. That's one of my favorite things to use. Okay. And then we're just going to put a little bit of black pepper on there, just for taste. Remember, we got we want to season the whole chicken, not just the skin. So that's why we put the stuff underneath the skin. Okay. Now here we go. As you can see, I've got a large cast iron skillet in there. If you have a large cast iron frying pan, you can do the same thing on your grill at home. I'm just gonna take the, the butterfly chicken, pop it in there. I'm also just gonna give a little bit of oil on the back. A little bit of salt and pepper as well. Now this cooker is kind of unique, isn't it? Yeah, the cooker is actually uh, very unique. I'll give you a uh, rundown of it. Just give me one second. All right, 
Obviously, you don't want to leave the door open too long because that's going to let a lot of the heat out. Now, we're going to cook, let that cook on the meat side down. So your breast side should be on the pan. And we're going to set the timer for 15 minutes and start. So while we're uh, waiting 15 minutes, I'm going to show you a couple other things. But yeah, I did want to discuss real quick this uh, this uh, grill that I've got behind me is what they call a green mountain pellet grill. Now this runs completely electrically off of little uh, wooden pellets. Kind of looks like rabbit food. <laughs> and what that is, is that is compressed uh, hickory and mesquite and apple wood. And this grill, I'll tell you what, you know, it, it, especially during the summertime, I haven't touched my oven in probably about a month and a half since I've gotten this thing. Uh, it works all different ways. It works as a smoker. The temperature ranges from 150 all the way up to 500 degrees. So it works just like a grill as well. So if you want to do hamburgers or steaks, you can do hamburgers or steaks as well. Uh, it'll crank all the way up to 500 degrees, which basically gives you the availability to use this just like an oven. Now, I'm not kidding you in the slightest when I tell you I made pizza on this last week, and it worked great. So, you can bake bread. You can do any kind of stuff that you would normally do in your oven, and here's the kicker. Your oven, how many volts is that, guys? It's 240, right? Most ovens, electric ovens anyway. This is 120. Runs off of a simple 120 outlet. Wow, that's amazing. You even have your temperature control there. Yeah, it's, it's got a thermostat, so you can set your temperature exactly where you want it to be. So if you wanted to do, you know, baked bread or something, okay, I'm gonna set my temperature for 375 degrees, boom. Once it comes up to temperature, it'll hold that temperature, just like an oven. So we do away with our oven then. Yeah, we do away with our oven. <laughs> I got this from uh, some good friends of mine down at Kent's Sporting Goods on uh, Washington Boulevard. They're close to Five Points next to the Dragon Restaurant. Oh, I also forgot to mention that we do have a little bit of a fundraiser going on here today. Uh, good friends of mine are uh, trying to raise some money, and Golden Beverage has uh, graciously donated some uh, Brigham Brew root beer and some uh, frosty cherry limeade soda. So, oh, look at here. Wow. This is our fundraiser. Great. Ahead, tell them what, what it's all about. I went to a national pageant last year in Oregon and I won and I have to go this August to go give up my title, but I can't afford to make it there. So I'm selling these vintage sodas for $2 each. So come help me out. I'm going to have some signs here in a second and they're right here, thanks. Thank you so much. All right, let's give her some support, guys. What we're going to be doing real quick before I make that fruit salad is I'm going to show you how to make a really tasty condiment for that fruit salad. This is actually a very popular Hawaiian thing. This is called chili water. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever been to that pretty popular sports bar and grill down the way by the, the Ogden City Junction, by the Megaplex and all that, but uh, that's what they use on their... Uh, their breads, they have it on their table. It's really good, sweet, spicy. And just out of curiosity one day, I was like, I wonder if that would work on a fruit salad. Tried it out, I was like, hey, hey, I'm gonna tell everyone about this. <laughs> so that's what we're doing. I'm gonna show you how to make this real quick. Super simple, 90% of the stuff already in your cupboard, with maybe the exception of rice vinegar. Now, if you have rice vinegar, then you've got pretty much everything else, because I guarantee you have, if you have rice vinegar in your, Covered, you're going to have everything else. So, simple ingredients. You're going to need sugar. You're going to need, what did we do with it? Oh, yeah. You're going to need kosher salt. You're going to need minced garlic, some rice vinegar, crushed red pepper, chili powder. And now this is just my personal adaptation. It says, you know, when I was figuring out how to make this, a buddy of mine says, well, they normally use peanut oil or canola oil in it, but I'm a guy with that likes flavor. So I actually went to the Asian aisle and I picked up this little bottle of sesame oil. Toasted sesame oil has a really, really good flavor. And uh, I'd like you guys to give it a try. So 
once we get it made up, I think you'll understand what I'm talking about. Okay. Other ingredients that you're going to need is uh, some cornstarch. This is not drugs, please. <laughs> That's just, I didn't have anything to put my cornstarch in, so <laughs> it looks kind of silly. Hmm. Anyway, all right, so what we need to do is we need to get the proper ratios going here. Now, oh, also, I forgot, you're also going to need water. And I've already gone ahead and put about, uh-oh, I'm going to put some more in because there are a bug decided to float in there. Yeah. <laughs> How you guys doing? All right, so half a cup of water. Half a cup of rice wine vinegar. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio there. Not rice wine, just rice vinegar, sorry. So there we go. Now to that, we are going to add three quarters of a cup of sugar. One, two, and three. And put the lid back on that. We're going to add a teaspoon of chili powder. Tablespoon of minced garlic. Now we're also going to add three tablespoons of that uh, sesame oil. One, two. And three, okay. Drop my cam. <laughs> can't do that. No, can't. <laughs> okay, now here's where it gets a little exciting. Crushed red pepper. Be careful, if you add too much, obviously it's gonna be a lot hotter than you would expect. I have actually found that one good solid tablespoon of the crushed red pepper works just fine, so. That's one tablespoon. I like your me measuring cup there. <laughs> well, I have oil in my tablespoon, so I just oh, want it to okay. stick. And I've, you know, I've been doing this for so many years. I know what a tablespoon is. I know what a teaspoon is in, in the palm of my hand. It's just one of those things, you know, cooks, uh, cooks like us, we know that kind of stuff. You'd be out camping and you'd have your measuring utensil with you. Exactly. Yeah. Just got to make sure that this... There we go. Okay. And you're gonna wanna put that on a pot and you're gonna wanna bring it to a boil and let it simmer for about a minute. And then once it's simmered for about a minute, then we can go ahead and we can let it cool down. Uh, but before we let it cool down, we are going to need to add that cornstarch. So I had... It's right, right there. Yeah. We're gonna have to use this cup. So here's here's the thing that about cornstarch a lot of people need to know is that always when uh, making a paste out of it, use cold water. If you use hot water, it's just gonna turn into a lump. So I'm gonna try to get as much of this oil out of there. There we go. I think next time I come out here, I'm just gonna have everything pre-measured. Okay, one tablespoon, and then two tablespoons of cold water. So let's go ahead and use some of this. So where do you come up with a lot of your ideas? Well, a lot of my ideas, honestly, are just uh, happy accidents. I'm in the kitchen, I'm making something, and then Holy crap, how did I do that? <laughs> and then I've got to go and, uh, what do they call that, reverse engineer how I did that? Yeah. 
Because <laughs> there's a lot of times I'll be sitting there messing around in the kitchen making sauces or something like that and come out, oh wow, this is great. And I didn't write any of it down. <laughs> and then I got to sit there and try to figure it out again. But what we're doing here is uh, we're combining the uh, cornstarch with two tablespoons of water. One tablespoon of cornstarch, two tablespoons of water. And what this is going to be is it's going to be a thickening agent for our, uh, just wanted to make sure the flame was still on, <laughs> our, our chili water. So when that comes up to a boil, the reason we do this is because when that comes up to a boil and we pour this in, if we were just to throw the cornstarch in, you would have these huge lumps. How many people have had lumpy Thanksgiving turkey gravy? Yeah. Yes. Well, you better not raise your hands. <laughs> My son's over there. Like, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, that, that that's usually wise because people will just throw the flour or throw the cornstarch in right into a hot pan, and it just makes that uh, cornstarch and the flour just turn into it like this little dough ball. It doesn't have a chance to disperse. We make a little s simple paste solution, dump it in, nice, smooth, but thick gravy. Now all we're doing is, oh, starting to boil. We're gonna bring that up to a boil. Now that it's boiling, we're gonna go ahead and add our cornstarch. Your son's getting back to you for his uh, experimentation on your uh, recipes and that. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right, so now that that is off. Is it off? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's off. So now that's going to go ahead and, and uh, thicken. We're just going to let it sit there for a little while. While that's going on, I'm going to go ahead and chop up some of these uh, remaining fruits. I did pre-chop some of the stuff because it was a little bit, uh, you know, time constraint. So. Hey, Will, run to the truck in the front seat and grab those apples, would you? We forgot one of the ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a basic, basic, simple fruit salad. Uh, I've got six kiwis here. I've got half of a pineapple chopped up and cubed. Uh, I've got some strawberries here. My son's gone to grab some uh, gala apples. I like the galas. They're nice and sweet. So we're going to be uh, using those. So I'm going to go ahead and start chopping this up, and then we're going to go ahead and put it into the bowl. So we got to actually clear some space here. Let's see. Just kind of move all the spices over here. Oh, that's dirty here. Let me take that from you. But I imagine you could use other vegetable or uh, fruits if you. Oh yeah, to. I mean uh, other fruits. If you've got you know like uh, stuff in your garden like raspberries, blackberries, cherries. Uh, I was taking a walk down the Ogden City Parkway the other day, and I think the uh, there's a one area where I just got like bombarded with like Japanese plums. Oh really? Yeah, they were delicious. But wow. Yeah, they were. Uh, they're all over the place down on the river. You got blackberries growing down there. You got great. Uh, all sorts of yummy stuff that you can walk <laughs> down the river, you can find it. Anyway, all right, so bananas. Thank you. I was wondering where my apples were. <laughs> <laughs> okay, simple, simple, simple. We're just going to go ahead and, you know what, Doug, I'm going to let you do some chopping. Okay. Okay. We well, can do that. What we need to do is I'm going to peel these bananas for you. Okay. And then uh, you can go ahead and just go ahead and use this knife right here to just chop them into little discs. Great. Do you have some ice cream, Stu? Do I have some ice cream? Yeah, no, we could I don't have any ice cream, but <laughs> trust me, when you have this fruit salad, you won't want any. Oh. Okay. This is this is like I said. This is a nice, easy summer afternoon meal. You don't have to get your house all hot with using your oven. If you got a grill outside, you can do this on your grill. And that's my timer, which means that my chicken needs to flip. So
Well, I hear that sizzling. Yeah, it's, it sizzles <laughs> nicely, doesn't it? There's okay, your... now that we've let it cook on the meat side down for about 15 minutes, we flipped it over, we're gonna okay. let it go for about another 20 minutes and that'll guarantee the chicken's done. Great. So let me go ahead and set my timer. Okay, start. All right, we're good. Now. So what we did today, you could actually do it up in a campsite or something like yeah, that. Yeah, you could, you could actually theoretically do this all up in your campsite if if you're uh, out on out on the town, or I mean not out on the town, out in the woods. <laughs> what am I thinking? I got too many things going on in my head real quick. Go ahead and chop that last one up and we'll cool. start getting it into the bowl. You know, Rachel Ray would be proud of us, too. <laughs> you think? <laughs> I, 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 I like her. Bananas. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now let's move this. There we go. Something else that uh, is another little tip I'd like to hand off to people. I've, I've discussed it before in the past, but I think it's worth mentioning again. When you're, when you're cooking, it's always important to have designated cooking boards okay uh, you're gonna have one specifically designed for meat. you're gonna have one for specifically fruits and vegetables try not to mix them up because it can end up with a little bit of a case of salmonella a little bit of an upset tummy if you get a little cross-contamination going on there so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add some strawberries cool. want me to cut those yeah I'll, I'll let you cut those I'm just gonna show you I just like them just like that. Just okay, take half. the tops oh. off and cut them in half. Great. And uh, at this point, uh, if you guys have any kind of questions whatsoever for me, please feel free to ask. I'll be more than happy to help you out with any kind of uh, knowledge I might have from my kitchen. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Obviously, the outlaws are, are around. That's why we got our badges on, Stu. I don't have my badge. Oh. They wouldn't deputize me. <laughs> Alrighty, so we got that. Oh, you know what? We can actually just throw this pineapple in. Just like so. And... Last but not least, we got these nice yummy apples. I've took the liberty of uh, peeling them the other night. Something else that you uh, might want to pass along, if you have it in your cupboard, or I should say if you don't have it in your cupboard, invest in some fruit fresh. It helps keep your, uh, veg or your fruits from browning. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that. You cut up some apples to snack on by the time you're finishing the last sliver. It's all brown and nasty. That fruit fresh helps prevent the, the browning. So it's good to use in fruit salads, especially if you're taking them to a party. You want it to be nice and bright and cheerful. You don't want people that, here's my fruit salad and it's all brown and yucky. So we got that going on and I don't know why I love that sauce so much, but I do. If I tasted it, it's more like a sweet and sour. Yeah, it's, 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 it's very reminiscent of, of a uh, kick. an oriental sweet and sour sauce, but with a spicy kick. Yeah. Yes, uh, ma'am. We can put them up on the website. Uh, we have a Facebook page still, don't we? We do. And we can go ahead and we can put it up there for you. Oh, the Average Joe Cooking Show. All right, so we got those good. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, we'll put those here in this. Look at that. 
Okay, now we got kiwis to do. Boy, that stove is warm. That's it is. It's a pretty warm <laughs> stove, I'll tell you. So do you cut them in halves or fours? Or? Uh, well, you know, honestly, right now, what I do is I, I like to, um, what I call a rustic cut. Uh -huh. I like to keep them all pretty much uniform in size, but I like that kind of, you know, haphazard uh, chop to it. Kind of okay. gives you that nice, like, uh, devil may care attitude, you know? Yeah. But I imagine like grapefruit sections you could put in there. Grapefruit sections, well here, here's the thing. Uh, something I've noticed a little bit about the citrus fruits, yeah. at least with this sauce, it doesn't really taste that good. Oh, okay. But uh, these, well I mean with the exception of the pineapple, the pineapple tastes pretty dang good. Oh, pineapple interesting. That's something I'm gonna have to research, I never thought about. I don't think pineapple is a citrus fruit. I think it has more sugar. Yeah, it does, it does have more sugar. <laughs> Want me to cut those others up for you? Oh or? yeah, we'll, we'll get them taken care of real quick. Yeah, go ahead and uh, cut those up. And I'm gonna check on my chicken real quick. Yep, it's burning. <laughs> I say that to my crew just like waits around like vultures waiting for me to screw us screw something up <laughs> they love to see me when i make it make a little mistake all right so now if you uh if you have them at home you can uh put it into like a little old uh save uh save one of your old salad dressing bottles Especially if it's glass, you know, it would be nice if it's glass. But if not, you can pick these little uh, dispenser bottles up at your local hardware store or down at the, the dollar store. Let's see if I can get this into this bottle without uh, spilling anything. How about that? I didn't spill a drop. You're good, Sue. That's why I keep That's telling myself. That's why you're the average Joe. That's huh? why I'm the average Joe. <laughs> this is a little bit colder, so we're gonna be putting that on the fruit salad. So let's go ahead and throw the kiwis in there. Looks good. Last but not least, we got apples. Apples. That adds a little crunch to it, doesn't it? Does it does add a nice crunch to yeah. it. Is there any special knives you use or you know, that you like? Honestly, if it's a good sharp knife, that's your, that's your best bet right there. I mean, there are people that will, you know, oh, sorry. There are people that will uh, spend, you know, $500, $600 on knives. Yes. And honestly, it all it all boils down to if your knife is sharp or not. Not whose name is on the blade. <laughs> I actually uh, I picked picked these uh, they're the restaurant quality knives, so I, that's what I'm used to using. Yeah. That's what I like. Cool. And uh, I actually picked these up out at Smith and Edwards. Really? Yeah. Wow. Relatively inexpensive. I'm getting hungry already. I'm working us, yeah. <laughs> I think we got maybe uh, about 10 more minutes until that chicken's done. And we got, yeah, go ahead and take a bite of that. Oh, did I put that in there? Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> Adds a little more crunch. Adds a little bit more. Who doesn't like a little core? Yeah.
So how long will it take you to complete a meal like this? Well, how long will maybe it be 30, take? Well, 30 minutes or? If, uh, the fruit salad is actually what takes the longest, believe it or not. Uh -huh. uh, so prep time on that is about, uh, well, depending on the size, actually, really. So if you're cooking for a family of four, uh, prep time on that fruit salad is probably going to be somewhere around, I don't know, 20 minutes. You know, because you got to skin all the apples and you got to cut up the pineapple. Uh, you got to cut up all the, the, the fruits and vegetables. But you could actually leave the skin on the apples. You, you could know. leave the skin on the apples, yes you yep. could, if, mm -hmm. if, if you were inclined to. Yep. So, I would say all in all, uh, prep time for this meal, about 45 minutes. Actual cooking. Oh. <laughs> I got a lucky feather, don't, 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 don't let me lose that. The feather just fell from the sky. Didn't hit the food. <laughs> Has a lot of color to it. Too. It does. That's yeah. that's that's kind of the thing. Is that I've always been a, a big advocate of the fact that you know if your food looks good, uh, it's going to taste good too. So I try to uh, make some of the stuff that when my kids were younger uh, they weren't inclined to eat too much. I tried to make it look as nice as possible, and you'd be surprised what color does to. Uh, in, increase a child's appetite. Is there any food that you like best, uh, you know, if you were going to pick if, out if, your own? Honestly, uh, I love barbecue. I've been a barbecue guy all my life. Mm -hmm. But if I had to pick one food to live off of for the rest of my life, and this is going to be like probably a slap in the face to a lot of cooks out there, bacon double cheeseburger. <laughs> I don't know why, it's just like, that's that's like my heroin. What about bacon and tomato sandwiches? Oh yeah. 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 BLTs, <laughs> me and my boys, we love we actually have uh, Wednesday night is BLT night. Good. We'll yeah. be we'll be out Wednesday then. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and put these in that basket. I don't want to touch it. No, it's alright. It's alright that I touch it. <laughs> <laughs> alright. It heals. So we've got a fruit salad here. You know, take your sauce now. You can choose one of two options. You can let it stand as is and let people choose whether or not they uh, want to put the sauce on. Yes. But I'm going to go ahead. I'd like everyone to try it, so I'm going to put the sauce on it Good. and let everyone have a little sample and let, let them decide whether or not uh, not for me or hey, I'm going to do that. Yep. So you don't need a lot. You could refrigerate the rest. Yes, huh? you can refrigerate. This will keep up to six months in your fridge. Good. What's because once you've boiled it, it's it's good to go. Just make sure that it's in an airtight uh, container. Okay. Do you, do you like to use metal bowls or? I like metal bowls. I'm. I don't know. It's just that industrial part of me, I guess. Oh, okay. Because I believe it or not, guys, I'm a mechanic by trade. So I love tools, I love metal, but this is what I, I love to do, so this is why I'm here. Okay, who'd like a free sample? Oh. All right, let's, let's, let's have a line look, come up, starting over those here, lines. and uh, oh, yeah, let's uh, get that out of there. Put that there, let me... Uh, let me serve you up real quick. This is why this is why they came. <laughs> this is why they came. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. the important part. Not to see me or you, I but to send us to eat the food. Thank you. Let us know what, how it is. And how yes, it is. please, I do want feedback. Good, bad, or indifferent. Yes. All here at the there farmer's market. Isn't that terrific? I imagine they You're can welcome. find their these fruits, uh, some of these fruits are here in the farmer's market. Yeah, with maybe the exception of the pineapple and, yeah. and stuff, you could probably pick up some of these fruits here at the farmer's market. Oh, that's a lot. There you go. You're hungry. Alrighty. There you go. Let's get you a little bit of a kiwi there. You're welcome. 
go, sir. Uh, you want a little bit more of that? Hang on. Let's get you some of that kiwi and banana. Thank you very much. What's that? The, the sauce. The I sauce like is actually a, it's, it's a Hawaiian recipe called chili chili water. Oh, that's that's good. I like that. That's very delicious. I know it's, it 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 really enhances the flavors. So let's. Uh, you got some? Do you have the recipe on your website? I will have the recipe on the okay, website great. hopefully tonight, as soon as I get home. Oh, okay, great. Average Joe Cooking Show. Average right? Joe Cooking Show. Dot com or what? Uh, it's actually on Facebook, correct? Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you go to Facebook and then you type in Average Joe Cooking Show, okay, you should great. be able to find Thank us. You. It's good. Thank You're you. welcome. Let's see. Why don't you put your plate down there and we'll spoon it in. We're, oh, here, let me hold up. We're coming to the end. Yeah, we're coming to the end there. There we go, and okay. just One a little more. bit left for the lovely lady. Is this the end? That this is, is the it. End. You Thank just, you. Thank you. you're the lucky lady. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for eating all my food. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's see what we got going on here. Got one minute left on that chicken. One minute. One minute. So I got to get this stuff cleared because... So when you put the pellets in, is there a way the the flavor comes through to the meat? Yeah. Oh yeah. Cooker? Yeah. Uh, it, the, the the lower the temperature, the more smoke you're going to get. Oh okay. Uh, the higher the temperature, you're not even really going to taste that smoke. So the the flavor from the pellets goes into the chamber then. Huh? Yeah. Basically, there's like a little chamber there at the bottom with an electric uh, probe, and it gets really hot, and it starts smoldering those uh, okay. those pellets. Then an exhaust fan kicks on. As soon as that exhaust fan, it heats, superheats the pellets, which creates the heat for the grill. Okay. But the best part is, like I said, is it, it's all wood, so you don't have to worry about it. And you know what? This 40-pound uh, bag of pellets lasts me, on average, about, well, I've been using my grill every night, so it averaged me about two weeks. So what happens if you just have a regular barbecue? Could you just still do the same oh, thing? Oh, if you had a regular barbecue, that's, uh, thank you for reminding me. There was a tip I wanted to give you guys. Uh, oh, hang on. I got to pull the chicken out and then I'll give you that tip. Stick back. There we go. You'll put Kentucky Fried Chicken out of business, Stu. <laughs> All righty. Golden brown, wow. What I did right there is I just went ahead and I, I turned off the, the grill. Another great feature that this thing has, that this grill has been cooking at 500 degrees. So I turned it off and I hit the fan button. Inside of 15 minutes, I'll be able to put my hand on the grill. Hmm. It cools down that quickly. Now, um, I imagine uh, you could put, the, the way you basted that, you could put that with the Thanksgiving turkey or something Yes, like actually you could do it with a Thanksgiving turkey, and I plan on doing that this year. It's uh, one thing that I, I've been toying around with the ideas. Number one, I love smoked turkey, huh? but uh, I'd really like to try different varieties of turkey, and this is one of the ways I'd like to do it. Okay, real quick, what was I talking about? The tip as far yeah. as barbecuing goes. If you have a gas grill or a charcoal grill, Charcoal grills are really easy to add that nice uh, wood chips to so you can get some smoke. But if you have a gas grill and you really like to have some smoke flavor, I'm going to give you a little little piece of advice. Get yourself an old soup can or a tuna fish can usually works the best. Take the label off, poke some holes in the bottom of it. And what you're going to want to do is go to the store, buy yourself some wood chips, soak them so they're nice and wet, pack that can with those chips, and then just set it right there in your grill with your burner. And what happens is that it starts smoldering those chips, and then you end up with a nice smoky flavor on your food. That's a quick way to do it. I'm not gonna say that it, it, it beats a smoker, because really nothing does, but if you really want some nice smoky flavor added to your food, that's one way you can do it. 
All right. Now, I don't have enough to give to everyone here, and I have to wait a couple more minutes, but uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to go ahead and uh, take some volunteers, about uh, five or six volunteers. Who wants to try the chicken? One, two, three, four, and five. <laughs> okay, wait a minute, we need, we need a couple more. Six, all right, back there, all right. Those people that I designated, uh, to come on up, uh, just give me about five more minutes. Uh, why we're doing this? A little bit of culinary knowledge for you guys. Who knows what they call the Maillard effect? Very, very simple. That's what they call resting your meat because how many of you guys know that when you cook a steak, you're not supposed to dive into it right away? You're supposed to let it rest and let those juices reincorporate back up into the meat. That's what they call the Maillard effect. If I was to cut into that chicken right now, everything would just fall out of it. And then we'd end up with not such a good chicken. But we let that settle for a couple minutes. Let me get a chance to cut it up real good. And it'll be nice and tasty. So you so, cook, cook it on each side for 15 minutes, right? Now, actually what I did here is I cooked it on the meat side down for 15 minutes and I flipped it over on its back and I cooked it for 20. 20, okay. So a total of about 35 minutes on five, about 500 degrees in a pan. A little bit of oil, but mostly what that, that, that is, that's that compound butter that we made. And that's going to give it that flavor. Oh. Thank you. I don't... Oh, they're twist-offs. <laughs> there we go. You got it? I'm not as strong as you. I use my apron. Oh. <laughs> I don't have an apron. Well, Let me get that for you. Can the average Joe do it? <laughs> there you go. Uh, that's good. That is really good. Yeah. yeah. So support our young lady here. <laughs> Let's 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 represent Utah. Let's send her to Oregon and say, "Well, uh, those guys in Utah, we can't compare." That'd be awesome. We need All right. we need some ice cream to put in a. I know. That, <laughs> hey, someone find us some ice cream. <laughs> okay. Root beer and chicken. That's good. <laughs> I know you cut off the wings and the legs. Is, do you do that first, then, then well, go to the body? Pe people have different ways of cutting up their chicken. This is just the way I do it. Okay. And if they need a half now, a breast, huh? You can do what they call a rustic cut. Now, it's very popular over in Italy. Uh, when you get to this point, you just want nice little small bite-sized pieces of chicken. So you take the breast and you just chop it into three sections like so. And that way, if people want more, they can have more, but you don't have to worry about over-serving anyone. Now, okay. we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. 12 pieces, so how many did I say? Six. Six, we so we can six add more. six more people. So let's go. Come on. I see you guys over there raising your hands. Do we have more silverware? I think we do. You can the, use uh, your, you can use your hands. <laughs> I hope we can. Uh, just one second. There you go, sir. Wing. There you go. Woman after my own heart. You're welcome. Let us know how it tastes. There you go. You go, ma'am. You're welcome. Hi. You're welcome. How about a leg? There you go. Nothing like. How about a leg. you, my man? How about a leg? Is that cool? There you go. Cool. This little yummy. This is, you know, this, my favorite part of the chicken. Thank you. That thigh. 
I'm a lag man. What can I say? There we go. All right, guys. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Those of us at the Average Joe Cooking Show like to thank you for uh, hanging out, cooking with me. I'm going to be down here next weekend doing it again. I hope to see you guys again. Uh, if you have any questions while I'm putting my stuff away, feel free. Come up, talk to me. I'm a, I'm a regular guy. I'll talk to you, whatever you want to talk about. Thanks. Thank you. Oh, thank you for uh, Doug. I'm sorry, what's your last name? Stevens. Again? Doug Stevens. I wanted to say Swenson for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> Doug Stevens, That's city councilman for Ogden. Thank you for coming out with us. Thank you. All right, guys. All right. Have a good day.